So, what up, hitters? Matrix Native here. And in today's video, we're going to go ahead and talk about how World War II actually influenced American Thanksgiving. During the narration, I'll be showing you like different accessories and such that come with this World War II mod. Go ahead, sound off in the comments if you got a suggestion for a build with Arma 3. We'll track with the 5th Bat build following the briefing. Enjoy the video. Daisy Mose in there. So, in November of 1944, Year of Our Lord, found the United States celebrating its third Thanksgiving since entering World War II. And the war certainly wasn't taking a break for the holiday. No, fuck no. With, with Americans opening up their newspapers Thanksgiving morning to headlines like 50,000 Nazis trapped on the Rhine. But the war wasn't the only conflict brewing on Thanksgiving 75 years ago. There was also a big to-do much closer to home. The date of Thanksgiving was causing a stir in the U.S. The result of federal legislation passed in 1941 declaring that Thanksgiving be celebrated on the fourth Thursday rather than traditionally the last Thursday. So, while 1944 saw the majority of Americans celebrating Thanksgiving on the 23rd, a few states were still holding on to the custom and celebrating it on the 30th. Other beloved traditions had to change as well on that Thanksgiving. There had been no Macy's Day Thanksgiving Day Parade since 1941, for example, well, since the company had donated the rubber in its famous balloons to the war effort. That's what she said. And Thanksgiving Day football games were played in far fewer places around the nation due to the number of men serving in the military. And, you know, here in 2020, yeah, it's kind of the same thing as far as, like, you know, Thanksgiving Day football with the COVID. Uh, and me, myself, you know, every year, maybe not in the last couple of years, but in years past, especially during my active service in the military when I could, always on Thursdays of Thanksgiving, was always the Detroit Lions plan. Then, as now, Thanksgiving dinner was the main event of the day. The war's effects were seen even at the supper table. So, by 1944, millions of American men and women were serving in the armed forces domestically or overseas, leaving empty spaces at the holiday table in many homes. Except, you know, for Jody sneaking in that motherfucker, right? In cities near military base, and if you don't know who fucking Jody is, just go ahead and Google who is Jody in the military services. Huh? You'll find out. To share a home-cooked meal for the holidays with a local family. In other homes, Thanksgiving dinner was held earlier or later than usual to accommodate family members who were working the holiday in factories and other work time industries you know helping the effort also point of fact i just wanted to say thank you again to all the families out there that hosted me and my eating ass i'm an eating machine on thanksgiving and i just really want to thank all the families that hosted me you know when i wasn't afar and at the base you know you could sign up and go have thanksgiving supper you know with with cool people man and just meet people and really that was one of the best things that i liked about the military it was just like you know everyday experiences right and you know that'll stick with you the rest of your lives as well as well as being a fucking civilian you know i'm sure you got times you can hold on to but having thanksgiving dinner with a complete strange family just really cool and usually i must say that these families actually do have kids that are in the military and maybe you know they're like deployed or something and can't be home some of them actually do come home one time i was sharing thanksgiving with a family and you know there was some pogue there who of course he was home and i don't know i gave him some eat shit but in the end though in the end it's really awesome of these families to invite military members into their domain hey check it out so when it came to the thanksgiving menu the war's influence was seen yet again this time in the form of food rationing. That's right, in 44, in 1944, Americans had been through two previous Thanksgivings under rationing. Sugar was still rationed that year, as well as cheese, butter, margarine, and canned fruit, creating kind of a challenge, you know, for your moms out there. And, you know, your dads, I know my dad really pitched in on Thanksgiving Day, right? And then, of course, you know, old Matrix had to do the cleanup there. Hey, 
he the old KP, but that's all right because that food was amazing. Thanks, mom and dad. Anyway, tracking, creating a challenge for any cooks to cook the traditional Thanksgiving dishes, right? But Americans had a reason to be grateful as fewer food items than before were being rationed in the United States by November 1944. Large shortening and coffee were no longer rationed, for example, because we all need our goat juice, right? And items such as red meat and processed food we're experiencing a temporary reprieve. Still though, Turkey Day dinner in 44 required more planning ahead than in the pre-war years. I mean, come on, Captain Obvious, that's kind of apparent. Those who had heeded the government's call to grow a victory gardens, you can Google that, could cook Thanksgiving dinners with the produce that they had canned or preserved, you know, over the past year or whatever. Other Americans made sure to save up rationing stamps to purchase ingredients for their Thanksgiving meal. So. You know, that just tracks right back on, like, the COVID thing. Are we going to be experiencing rations during this thing? I mean, you know, the first time it hit us, you know, we ran out of fucking shit paper. So, I don't know. But that'd be kind of, uh, there's a lot of comparisons with this Thanksgiving and, say, Thanksgiving then and, say, you know, when we fucking beat the Indians, say, with Thanksgiving, really, the creation of Thanksgiving. Oh, anyway, track. Despite the challenges and changes that Thanksgiving 44 presented to Americans on the home front, people were generally willing to sacrifice for the war effort, right? Especially when they considered, like, all the battalions of fucking rangers over there, huh? Hoppers on your feet! Let's go ahead and track down rains on this bed, huh? For the rifle today, we're going to be carrying the M1 carbine, and if any time you can't, read like you know the small print and shit it's right here in big print so give a spray to fire actually range of impact and uh, wait now i'm not saying you couldn't carry something like the thompson because obviously that was carried throughout as well and we'll go ahead and maybe here's just the regular m1 carbine with the wood uh stock there obviously but we're gonna carry the carbine today because we airborne rangers and we will get into like you know the lee infield i mean we'll get into some other other weapons here's the m1 grand that's actually you know that's the papa bear of them all right there as far as the m1 uh rifles go okay launchers today we're not really going to be equipping any per se just because it really doesn't fit the build that i put together today for the fifth bat Airborne Ranger, you cupcakes it. don't know the BAT stands for Battalion Who, because you got the 75th Regiment, and then today you have only the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd BAT, i.e. Battalion, right? But what people really don't realize was there were six of us, six battalions of us back in World War II. The 2nd and the 5th, obviously, participating in the cliff climbing on Omaha. So, second bat always gets a lot of love. Today, I just wanted to throw some love at the old school, old guard, fifth bat. Ugh. So again, today, we're not really going with a rocket launcher, right? And I also want to take this opportunity. I know that a lot of you guys aren't used to me doing, like, arm a bit shit. Neither am I. And it has literally taken me, like, a week just to get the basic controls down, right? Like, I got so much to learn. But, uh, yeah, no launcher today, as you can see, though. There's plenty that uh, we're going to have fun with in the future. Today, obviously, we're going with the old standby, the Colt in 1911, which, if you follow this channel for any time, is my go-to. It's my nightstand. So, the Colt 1911, again, this is a mod that I have installed for World War II. Now, you do have such as the Luger, which, you know, is a pretty decent weapon back in the day. The uh, Walter P-38, you know, the old Wibbly there. That's what she said. But today we're going to go ahead and track on this uh, M 1911. Now I will tell you though that I really, uh, I mean, the side aperture it's one thing, you know, in like Ghost Recon, but in a true simulated game like Arma, there is definitely some differences that if you ever watch any of my Arma gameplay, uh, you will pick up on uh, rather quickly that. Arma actually I mean it's just I'm not gonna say it's better but it's definitely more into the realism of how I feel a true milsim game should be uniform today obviously we're gonna be going with the old 
U.S. Army Ranger World War II fit, right? It's pretty solid. Uh, if you look it up, it does uh, resemble it quite well, as well as the old 101st Airborne. They both share this type of uh, blouse and trouser, if you will. I actually really, really think that's cool. I already know the uh, build I want to use that on right there. That That's pretty damn hood, uh, even though I don't believe you're going to be jumping out of planes in combat boots. Sure. Hey. So your vest, your LCE, your LBE, your web gear, whatever the heck you call it in your world, basically we're going to skip it today and come back to it. Though We are going to come back. We're not going to skip it completely and this is why. We're going to sink in to our backpack out sack, rust sacks, right? And today we're going to be hitting with the old US Type 5 parachute, the T5. So I've actually never used the T5. I jumped with T10s, T11s. However, uh, you know, I never jumped in 1942 like these fucking idiots here right so we're gonna go ahead and equip the type 5 the t5 as they say in the business and i gotta say man they did a pretty damn remarkable freaking job on this you got your reserve here which i think it might be a 83 or something a reserve pack but uh yeah i think they did a uh, a really really good job here right for the sake of immersion and simulation this is what we fall out with right once we uh go ahead and hook up and jump out We'll go ahead, hit the ground, and we will switch into the vest. But first, what we must do is go ahead, empty this, then we'll go ahead, track on our vest. Which, today, we're going to be wearing the USM1 carbine officer's web gear, right? I like it because you got to make sure you're equipped with the radio because, you know, after all, you know, the radio and the binos, really, they're just as important as what we got on the the back here right so just remember that we'll go ahead and again equip the vest that has some kind of radio you know i like the binos it gives it that that real world war ii uh immersed feeling if you will and again just as important as the carbine that we have there slung on the shoulder right then we got our little messenger pouch and, and whatnot for all the you know, importante intel. Got our uh, old H2O device back there. Looks like we got our magazines for our carbine and our 45, probably a first aid kit there as well. So then we'll return back to a backpack, truck sacks, Alice sacks, and we'll go ahead and equip the USM Mike 1928 Haber sack with the bandolier. We'll have that on and then we'll have the bandolier bandoliers right here strapped to the front we got a radio our binos our entrenching tool i mean we are fucking good to hug <laughs> all right the lid the piss pot the brain bucket whatever you want to call it right today we're gonna go ahead and equip this ranger bat helmet with it strapped up right now again you can get it right here with the co let me tell you something guys so any officer okay they're gonna have that white line going vertically with an NCO it's going to be horizontal and then obviously we're part of the 5th battalion of the 75th regiment right so the 5th diamond here is in the yellow I believe the second bat was in the orange so everyone had a unique color so that when you're charging that motherfucking pillbox that you know who the fuck's in front of you whether it's a NCO you know maybe you need to follow him to an objective or whatnot and again remember these were painted they didn't have the, all that that reflective cat eyes that, that us hitters got today right so we'll go ahead put the fifth lid on and we'll make sure that we strap it up so to be honest with you when i first fucking got in for like two or three days i actually had to walk around with a steel pot it was when i was with the cab right now i will tell you this though in the cab during that time frame, the cab was the only one that got to run their chin straps in the back and snap them, right? And then when the Cavalars came into play, which again, the old K-Pot was already in play when I was in, right? When I first joined in but again if you've been tracking my channel for a little bit you know that some things get grandfathered in and the steel pot was no exception but once it went to army usage to the cavalry the steel pots were then disbanded however i think that it's pretty cool that the fucking cab right if you ain't cab you ain't shit i that the fucking cab was able to pin their straps and snap them 
to the rear of the lid. Now, would I actually recommend that for a fucking grunt charging a pillbox? The fuck no, I wouldn't, right? So, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we're buckled in, right? We ain't going to be wearing it like John Wayne, right? So, for you guys that don't know that as well, with a strap on buckled, right? We call him John Wayne, right? Trying to be a hero. John Wayne in it, right? And that's a good way to actually get smoked. Very smoked as well. So headwear today, really, there's not a whole lot to really uh, go about with it. It is World War II. It's not like they had fucking Oakleys and, you know, range glasses, you know, that cost $150 and it will help you improve your uh, your fucking targets downrange, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what I will use this for are the gloves. I'm, I'm really tracking that. So we'll go ahead and put on the wool gloves the green in color even though those look a little black but uh, I know when I served that we had the green inserts and I believe the uh, black leather shell case we call them the black shell casings however that was all pretty much scrapped when you hit operation you know and we trade them in for Oakley's or you know batting gloves some shit like that right so today though we will go and uh, why not we'll just go ahead and throw the US Airborne's on however I just don't like that color right there right so we'll just go with the black leathers and call it a day. Oh, MBGs, obviously there were none. Binos, you know, I'll go ahead and grab the American binoculars. So binos, as stated, you just hit B in game. The map, again, M in game. Terminal is going to be a non-factor. Then communications, obviously we have a radio. Now, back in the day, obviously they had these big hunk of radios, but we'll still probably use the uh, TeamSpeak radio in the server if we ever play in the server as well navigation again your compass you'll just hit c for it and then obviously you have your german compasses here i might have to uh check those out one day watches obviously we won't equip one today because we're wearing sleeves and such face you can go ahead and pick from several faces as well it's not like ghost recon where you actually you know have to stay pretty much confined to the to the same character or whatnot right here's a couple of faces so you guys can see right i believe i picked smith the last time so we're gonna go with smith here and call it a day pretty much on that face obviously Waiting. you can pick whatever Waiting. voice you want here Waiting. so we'll go Waiting. with number eight today and then obviously insignia will stick with the Rangers. So, but again, a lot of these are mods that I have put in today. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the build today. I know it's been a long time. We'll work on that. However, if you hadn't, go ahead. Snipe that like. Snipe that sub. Hope everybody has an amazing day today. I hope tomorrow's amazing. I hope yesterday was amazing. Tell all your friends about our channel, and I'll catch you next video. Because that's how we roll. Ah. Uh, Right. Oh, it looks all kind of fucked up. <laughs> what the fuck? This is so retarded.